Hey, this is Jen Strogatz, and I'm about to speak with Mondo Cosmo, singer, songwriter, and producer, also known as his real name, Josh Ostrander. Um, his next album, New Medicine, will be out later this year, and he just released his single, Upside Down, from the album New Medicine last week. So you just released Upside Down from your new album, New Medicine, which is yeah. going to come out sometime this year, right? Yeah, we're trying to figure out the release date. We had a release date, and I, we're trying to stick to it. It's just, you know, for a rock and roll band to put out a record, it you want to be able to tour off of it, and we can't seem to get an answer as to when we'll be able to get on the road, which sucks, but understandable. Um, but yeah, we're figuring that out. But yeah, this will be this was planning to be the lead single into the record. Okay, and so I I read also that um, when you were writing it, it was sort of geared towards the fact that 2020 was like an election year. Um, and now sort of what's going on in the world? <laughs> what do you think about the irony of releasing it now? Yeah, Corrupt. it's it's weird. We um the opening line is every single night I watch the evening news and wonder. And that was kind of the premise of the tune. It was just like, I wrote it kind of when um, the impeach impeachment hearings were happening. So I was really like, I was all into that. And, um, and I was like, it, yeah, it was just kind of lining up. I was just like, man, the song, I think like delivering a message like that, but in like almost like a Beck Odelay type of direction, I was like, this is the best way I feel like to get the point across. Um, but yeah, and then we were in Philly playing at the Ardmore Music Hall March, the first week in March, I think. Yeah, I was, I was supposed to, so I also, I'm a photographer. I was supposed to come shoot you at uh, um, Johnny Brenda's, uh, that show. I was so excited about that freaking show. <laughs> I mean, St. Patty's Day, sold out show. It was going to be amazing. Um, but yeah, so we'd never played the song before, uh, Upside Down, and we're at the sound check. And um, it was the first time we played it. And we were playing it on playing it. We did play it that night. And I remember at sound check, we played it, and it sounded great. And it was one of those moments where the band all, the band, we finished it at soundcheck and the band all looked at each other and they were like, this song needs to come out right now, you know? So we kind of, we just pushed to get it out. And, um, the reaction has been really, I've never had a reaction to a release before like this. It's really? pretty nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I've seen you posting on your Instagram about it. Everybody is posting and like, you know, was nuts. Out, yeah. out. and I mean, it's a, the feel of the song to me is like way different than your other songs, which yeah. I, and I really dug like the way you did it. It's almost like G love style in a way. Yeah. To me, you know? <laughs> I love that. Yeah. No, I love, I'm really into the new song and I'm yeah, That's great. big fan. So, um, anyways, so, uh, in the past I saw that you toured with Bas Dale and Spoon and yeah, Right? You were opening? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. That Bastille tour was amazing. I mean, we we only played, Mondo had only played like five shows maybe before we went out with Bastille. Wow. Um, it was just kicking off, you know? We were like, wow, this is, and the first show was in front of like 30,000 people at like a hockey rink. And we're like, <laughs> what? This is nuts. But it was great because it was such a learning experience to just be like, you can either go out and just do okay and get through the show or you can go out and try to steal the fucker from him. You know what I mean? Like, let's try to blow him off the stage. Let's do everything we can. And it kind of started this mentality of the live show of just being like, let's go out and just play it like it's our last show and just leave it all on the stage. And I, I love my band for that because we, whether it's a, a, a bedroom show or you know a living room show or it's Kimmel or it's in front of 90,000 people in Quebec City like we we leave it on the stage I love that about them amazing yeah, yeah. I was I was um reading a, a interview you did a few years ago I think about um you're playing at um 
some someplace in Philly and you just it was like full circle almost I think your brother was in the audience yeah playing. yeah um you know someone who taught you like what the right beer was to drink and things like that and I like I just yeah it was cool so it sounds like you have really cool live shows I I mean I was excited to see you at Johnny <laughs> Brenda's so I know um, well we'll be back I think they postponed the show so yeah yeah we got to go make good on them which I'm excited about at some point Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Point. Um, so you live in L.A. now, obviously. Um, how would you compare this the local music scene in L.A. Um, to the local music scene in Philly? Um, it's different. There's just a lot more venues out here, which is nice. Um I mean, there's, uh, you know, I'm always, like, seeking out the bands that are coming out of Philly, like, forever, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, there is something really special to a band that comes out of Philly to me. Yeah. That, um, there's just, there's a grit and there's, like, a, there's a vibe to it that really is really special from, you know, G-Love to Dr. Dog to all, you know, all these bands that I just have just followed. There's something really special about them. Um la is it's it's big you know so there's a lot there's always a lot going on there's a lot of shows there's a lot of venues there's a lot of up-and-coming bands so it's harder to keep track i guess of what's happening in la as much as i try um i guess that's the only difference really i mean good music is good music i guess it comes from anywhere but um it's I guess it's a blessing and a curse that there's so many different venues in LA because it's tough to keep track at times. No, that makes total sense. I feel like it's, well, LA is like almost just saturated with, you know, people who are like going to LA to like make it out there. But yeah, I feel like in Philly, you know, we have these local bands that we all know and love and, um, and we all root for. And, you know, so I feel yeah. like you're, you're after really learning more about your story, you're such a good, um, you're a perfect example of like what we stand for as a oh, that's city. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, you've fought really hard um, and you've like been through it and now, you know, feel like this is a time for you to really like be the artist you want to be and things like that. And that's just like, I feel, you know, a true uh, Philadelphia maybe. story. <laughs> Yeah, it was, no <laughs> there's always got to be like a rocky aspect, to, know. like you know what I mean. It's never Love easy for anybody from Philly. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so um, so you, I saw that you played the Exponential, um, the X XPN Fest. Um, that was a great show. Yeah, yeah. I, that was like one of our. That was a special show. Yeah, what I loved was that. that like for you, like after you grew up in Bucks County, right? I saw, yeah, yeah, grew up in Bucks, and then when I was like seventeen, I think I moved down to like North Philly, Fishtown area, and then I moved down to South Philly, like Fourth and Reed. Okay. Um, and then I was just touring so much that I was like, you know, it didn't make sense to even have an apartment in Philly. Am I, you know, so I just, you know, but yeah, I, there's. Whenever I go back, like when we play, when we played like the XPN Fest, and man, it is just like I'm like every, the band's like, why did you ever leave? You know, it's one of those where I'm like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's amazing here. People like you here. It's nice. <laughs> um, like you know, growing well, growing up there, and you know, realizing what an influential thing XPN is. Like, what was it like for you to play the festival? Oh, yeah, I've been, I was, you know, it's funny now because Helen and I are really close friends. But, I mean, for years, I was sending Helen songs, you know, from all the bands I was in, just trying, man, like, if we can get one spin on XPN, like, that would have been, like, making it to us. Mm -hmm. um, so I do not take lightly, like, the fact that they have been such a champion for me. They're amazing people. It's amazing station i love like going down and seeing like the growth of the station and you know it's member supported and it's just like dang this is like i'm i'm like there's a sense of pride for that sure. i have now for them which is really cool to me that's awesome yeah really awesome yeah. yeah um so what do you think some advice you 
have to, that you could offer to local musicians trying to make it in the industry would be? Yeah, um, I get asked this a lot. And my thing is always just like, yeah, just play every show you can play. <laughs> Honestly, if like, you're going to be a rock and roll band, like you have to, you got to, you know, you got to pay your dues. You got to like, you got to learn how to like work a crowd and like you're going to be doing all the opening slots and it's like what can you do to try to like steal the show and just hone your craft and get good and just wear your band on your sleeve and don't be embarrassed to send music to radio stations and and ask for favors you know and that's a hard lesson that was hard for me because like growing up in Philly like asking anybody for help was something that was inherently not something i would do it just felt weird but it got to a certain point where it was like you have to ask for help sometimes you have to like you know the pride will pride will set you back two years you know so just you have to be obsessed you know and that's like that's what i seem to find among people that that have had a career in doing this is that they're completely obsessed you know it's yeah. like they, you know, and I think from Philly, like the best thing I got was like my work ethic from my dad, who was like a landscaper his whole life. And, you know, and it's just like, dude worked his tail off. And I learned that from him. So I say, if you want to do it, you got to just, you know, you got to wake up doing it and go to bed doing it. Totally. No, that's really awesome advice. And I think that like, I mean, specifically in the music industry, I think like a lot of ego can come into play with people and um, yeah. that can get in your way. And um, I think that's just really solid advice, especially, you know, yeah, this in a sense of pride because everybody needs help. Everybody needs to reach out. That's like an important lesson Yeah, that I've had to learn in my life. It's like reaching out is difficult, but it's necessary. Yeah. So, um, so you left um so what's it like for you recording for an independent label compared to you know the majors what was that choice like for you and um how did that free you up as an artist oh it's a great question um well really the main difference is my label now i just send in the songs and they have zero comments and i love that you know um with the major label there was a lot of back and forth like with the songs and stuff there would be like mixed notes and you know like can we do this can we do that in the song and i was fine to try i'm always fine to try somebody like it goes back to your ego thing where it's like you can say no if you want to but it's like you know these people you know like my a r guy at republic was really smart he was really good he knew it he had a great ear he was in bands forever so we'd always try it out. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Um, it just feels like where I'm at now is a very safe place for me to be as an artist because they kind of just let me do whatever I want to do. And it's like, as an artist, that is just the greatest thing in the world, you know? And they're like, this is your thing. This is your vision. We're just going to try to, like, you know, bring it home for you. It's like, man, I've, I've been waiting for that for a long time. So it feels really nice. That's awesome. Yeah. That must be a really good feeling. I mean, yeah. seriously. Um, so, and then also as a big, like huge fan of Nirvana, um, I saw uh, that you worked with Butch Vig. Um, what was that like for you? And was there anything like specifically unique and special that stands out? Yeah. Butch is, I mean, it's, it's Butch Vig, you know? So, um, how that came about was, um, I saw an interview we did like two years ago on somebody sent it to me on Twitter and they asked him what he was listening to anything new. And he said, there's this one artist named Mondo Cosmo. He's got a song called hold on to me that I just, I think I, I love. And I was like, what the fuck? Cause I yeah. started playing guitar when, um, when in utero came out. Wow. That was like, I was just like, this is what I'm going to do with my Happy life. birthday, by the way. Oh, thank you. That's sweetie. Yeah. Appreciate it. Happy birthday. Um, but yeah, so like when that record came out, uh, Butch didn't do that record. He did Nevermind, but um, an equally great record. But like for me growing up, like that was 
that was when I started, you know, and I just, I mean, Butch's career, like, you know, Siamese Dream, like these records that just absolutely changed my life. And I always, there's a great quote about Butch, like every band, the record they make with Butch is always the band's best record. And I found that to be so friggin' true. So I had a friend, her name is LP, um, and she was working with Butch on a song. And I was working on a song with LP too. And she's like talking about Butch. And I told her about the Twitter thing. She's like, you should meet Butch and talk to him. I was like, oh my God. Okay. So then uh, Butch invited me over to his house to um, to listen to music, uh, some of my tunes. And um, fuck, man, just the nicest, sweetest dude. And it started this, this friendship where... Um, I would just start sending Butch demos that I was working on every day. I would just send this guy whatever I was working on. And like clockwork, the dude would just respond. And it just it opened up this amazing friendship where he would kind of guide me towards. Um, he's like, you should focus on this song, you know, and I could tell when like he's so positive, but I could also tell in a very beautiful way when maybe I shouldn't focus on one song and focus on another and he just, the encouragement that dude gave me was just, because I was also leaving the label to go to a different label. So I was feeling like a little like, what am I doing? Like, is this, I was feeling a little lost. And that, that man like just gave me such confidence. That's amazing. And it was just, yeah, it was really beautiful what he did for me. And I'll always appreciate it. So he was almost like more of like a mentor to you in a way. Yeah. He was like, you know, like my guru for this, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, He was just a lovely friend that you know because like it i don't really send a lot of music out to people when i'm working on it because i don't want it to get too influenced by there is something to like just being like i made this i love this you know but at the same time it's like having one of the best set of ears that has ever done it like to be able to bounce a song off of him is like what it's amazing it's so cool totally that's awesome. Um, and then, so then you, Grammys on the Hill invited you to speak yeah. uh, in support of the Music Moderation Act in 2018. So what was yeah. that experience like, like going to Washington? What was that like? That was nuts. The Grammys asked me to go speak to Congress on behalf <laughs> of the Music Modernization Act. Mm-hmm. And Jen, I'm so dumb. Like, I'm just, I was just like, I said no. I was like, I don't think I'm the right person for this. Because it's actually, like, really important stuff. It, like, helps get songwriters more money on the radio and stuff like that. It's important. Mm -hmm. And I was like, do not send me. I'm like, I will mess this up. And they just wrote back. They're like, yeah, you're going. Like, this was, we weren't really asking. We were telling you you're going. So I went. I went with my manager, we flew to DC, we stayed in a hotel right next to the White House. Next day we woke up, went, walked through the halls of Congress, like, talked to congressional leaders, we went to the Senate, talked to senators, and it was just like, and as I was doing it, I was, the whole time I'm just like, I should not be here, this is so ridiculous, I felt like such a phony. But as I was telling them my story of like, I've been doing this for 15 years and it took me 15 years to finally like not have to work three jobs to do this. Right. And, and I realized I'm like, man, I actually like I am I should be here. I should be speaking to them about this because it shows that there's so many people that work so hard at doing this and they're just not compensated properly for it. So it felt really good. It was like the coolest thing I've ever done for sure it was just like is it, it was crazy it was very i was very humbled yeah that's amazing i mean yeah i mean and and then you know whether you're like doubting yourself or not like you're basically putting a face to you know what yeah. you're talking about and that's important for sure yeah so, i think you're right you know yeah and so that's like an amazing thing for sure yeah, yeah totally um that must have been really intimidating though i, it was, I would have been yeah <laughs> but um, yeah so the so 
I read about you breaking your hands. Was yeah. that for this new album? Is that before this new album? Oh my god! Yeah, album? I had um. So the band on the last record, we toured for ten months straight, mm-hmm. and it was just it was the most exciting time ever because it was like, like I said, I've been doing this so long, so finally having people like want to come out and come to the show and talk after the show and and like I just. I didn't say no to anything. I would do every morning radio show. I would do every meet and greet. Any acoustic thing, we would do it. We were just saying yes to everything. And at the end of that 10-month run, I was just fried. I was just, I was spent. And um, and I knew I had to start writing the next record. And I wasn't writing much that I liked. Um and then the last thing we had to do after the tour was we had to do a video shoot where the label wanted us to do like a live performance in front of people. And I said no to it. I didn't because we had like a 15 hour travel day coming back from New York. And then we had to be in somewhere in, in Hollywood at like eight in the morning with all the gear. And I knew my band was fried and I was fried. But again, we said yes to it. I showed up. And then it was just so wrong. And it wasn't wrong. Like there were a lot of people working really hard to make it great. And it was just like, it was something like I got to the point where I was like, I lost control of this. Mm. And now there's a lot of money on the line and I wasn't happy. And we did the performance and there were technical issues. And I I don't know what happened, but like I just and I never this never has happened. And hopefully it'll never happen again. But like I lost my shit. I went into the the control room and the bands there and like all the bands, girlfriends and wives are there. My management's there, labels there. And I just fucking lost it. And I started screaming like you're ruining this beautiful thing or something really <laughs> dramatic. And I turned and I thought I was punching like one of those foam walls that they have in the studio. Uh And it was a big glass, like double pane studio glass door. Okay, wait, time out. I just like, how did you mistake a foam like studio wall for like, if it's glass? Like I just. Well, you have to picture I'm screaming at the moment (laughs) and I just turned and I thought I was punching. It was very quick. It wasn't calculated. And I just fucked up and I punched this glass door and my hand, like it came out and my hand was just like fucking veins, <laughs> everything. My drummer came up and tied a tourniquet and we went right to the emergency room and I was there till like six in the morning getting like they were putting the hand back together. And yeah, there I still don't have feeling in most of it and they were like, you're not going to have feeling for two years. Um, and it sucked. And I had to like go down the line of apologizing to everybody for what happened. And that sucked. And that was around the time my label and I were like, maybe this isn't the best idea, you know, and understandably, uh, it was like a liability at that point. It was embarrassing, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, but what happened was I started writing music again even though I was in a cast, I was like writing tunes daily. Like the first song I wrote was Black Cadillac and then and then Generator and then Come On and all these tunes that like are now starting to come out were like, mm-hmm. like it was like this great moment where I was like, man, and I went to the doctor because I had to go every week to get medicine and all that stuff. And I, I go to the doctor, I'm like, dude, I'm like, I'm like Jimi Hendrix on acid right now. Like whatever you're giving me, I'm writing these songs and I'm just like, I I love and I'm so excited about. And the doc goes, let me ask you, Josh, do you think it's the fact that you're on these, these pills that aren't affecting you at all? Or is it because you actually like literally punched the wall and dealt with whatever you had to deal with? Totally. Yeah. And I think he was right. Um, But it was, it was and it's weird because like it was terrible and my hands are still fucked but it's like i would probably if i it asked me if i had to do it again to get the songs that i wrote from it i would say yeah like i had to go through that for whatever reason you know 
You, I mean, I don't know how spiritual you are, but I believe everything happens for a reason. And that obviously was like a catalyst of getting you from here. You're, you know, with this label feeling a little creatively like pushed yeah. down and then, you know, yeah. and I mean, first of all, like, come on. I'm obsessed with that. Song. Oh, that's sweetie. Beautiful. And Thanks. yeah, so, you know, that's what I believe. But yeah, I think you're right. I, th I believe that, too. I am. Um, I'm just happy to to be healthy now, and you know, not punching anything. For sure, I think that <laughs> is a win. I mean, no. <laughs> um. So, all right, let's see. Um. Oh, I also wanted to ask you what the effect of having a, a hand in a cast was like on the album. Like, I I saw you taped your pick to your cast yeah, to play guitar. Yeah. Um, and that there's some songs you can almost like hear the cat. Yeah. On if, I mean, if you're listening loud to black Cadillac, you can like hear my cast hitting the strings. Um, but yeah, that was an issue. And then, um, I didn't really know what to do. And then just another saving grace from this whole story was, um, this guy named Peter Hayes from a band called black rebel motorcycle club, which is one of my favorite bands. And I've spent many tours opening up for them just a great band and he reached out through a mutual friend and he was like I, I hear you need some help and i was like oh my god one of the world's greatest guitar players is offering to like give me a hand and and again just same as butch like this dude entered my life and he would sit down and we would go through the songs and if i couldn't do a guitar part he would do it um and it was just it made it he made the record you know it was like he, his guidance on it too and same thing with butch just being like it was amazing how much him and butch kind of lined up on songs without even talking to each other about it but they would kind of lead me in the same direction of like you should focus on this you should do that um yeah it was it was really like a collaborative thing with just a lot of people like helping me get this record done that i'll always be you know thankful for that's awesome. So, all right. So, I just have a few Philly-based questions for you. Cool. Um, let's see. Favorite bar in Philly? I I just love the bar at Johnny Brenda's. I really do. I I just like whenever I go in there, I'm like, this is my favorite place. I love it. Yeah, the venue upstairs is really. It's. Like, I love it. Like on when you're on stage, in the balcony when it's like so close, like the people. Yeah. I love it. It's yeah. Intimate, and I love that. You know, yeah, I feel like the most sort of audience interaction with the band is like always at that venue for me. I know, yeah, then I love that. Um, well, I was about to ask you favorite venue, but what do you well, think? I remember my old favorite venue used to be and this is a long time ago, but the, the Kyber Pass when I was coming up, we would play the Kyber Pass like twice, three times a month, opening up for bands. I have not been back. I don't know what is going on there now, but that was always like some of my favorite memories of my life were at the Kyber Pass. I'm trying to remember if that's the one that's like um, just, I mean, it's just like a rundown building at this point. Um, it's on, um, I think it's on 2nd Street. 2nd. It's in like Old Town. I'm not oh, sure. I don't know what that one is. Like yeah. I thought it just became like a restaurant, like yeah, full on. With, I know like, there's like TLA, like I mean, yeah, on South, but um, hmm, yeah, I don't know that one. I mean, you're forty, right? Yeah, just turned forty. Okay, Christ. Nice. Well, I'm thirty, but you're the same age as like all the people I know. So they, <laughs> they would know it. I'll ask that. They would probably know it. Yeah, know it. Um, let's see. Favorite Philly slang. That you still use to this day, maybe in LA. When I say water, or sometimes yeah. when I'm talking fast, I say, you know, I say water. Like people are like, "What? Where are you from?" I'm like, oh god. In What's wrong with in Florida, people make fun of me for saying Florida <laughs> instead of like Florida. <laughs> Florida. Florida. Um, yeah. And do you are you aware of like any local Philly artists right now that you're really into? I still follow, like, um, there's a band called Illinois um, that I kind of came up with, and we would play together. Um, I still send my songs to him for him to sing on, and then he sends them back 
for like backups and stuff like that. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm just like, he sent me some new songs he's working on the other day. I was just like, how are you not the biggest thing in the world? These are so stinking What's good. The name? Um, the band's called Illinois. Illinois, okay. The lead singer, his name is Arch. Arch. Um, I, yeah. I mean, I know Illinois. I didn't know. I didn't know it was from Philly. I, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Well, I'll look into him now. But yeah, please. Yeah, definitely will. So, um, yeah. Any? Well, I don't know. Anything else you want to tell me about um, Upside Down or New Medicine that you just like would want people to know? I'm just so excited to finally get this record out. I, I hope it's sooner than later. I have a feeling it's going to be sooner than later. Um, I just love the fact that it's called New Medicine and we're in the, like, I, we came up with that title months ago and now we're in the middle of a pandemic. So I'm like, this is all lining up here. It, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited. The record is like front to back. I could not be prouder. It, I mean, we wrote like 70 tunes and we picked the best 10, so they're good, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. No, I can't wait to hear it. And I can't wait for you guys to be able to tour again. Because, oh, my God. You know? It's going to be great. I'm excited. Like, I feel like when it's time, like, it's going to be like really special to be playing shows. And I think the crowds are going to be psyched about it. And I think it's just going to be a win-win for everybody. For sure. Absolutely. Have you been doing any of the live, like, digital festivals? or digital live stream things right now or no we get we get asked a lot mm -hmm. um i'm always a little hesitant like at times i just i i don't i because i see some people doing them and i'm like ah, maybe you shouldn't have done that <laughs> <laughs> you know like not in a bad way but i'm like oh, I know. <laughs> yeah it's really and um it's it, a weird thing i think but yeah you, so we're trying to find ways to do it we've been releasing um this thing we did called Alive in Exile, where we record a song every week and put it out every Tuesday in April. We're releasing a song that we recorded. The band all recorded our parts in in exile, separated from each other. Mm -hmm. And um, the response on that has been great. But I think that's because it sounds good. Right. It's not like I live. I, yeah. I, mean, I struggle with that, like where I'm like playing things on Instagram live and I'm like, I have no idea what this sounds like. I, you know, and it could easily sound very bad. So I, I'm hesitant at times to, to do it, but I should be doing it more because I really don't have much to do. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this is true. You know, <laughs> not much to do right now. But yeah, no, that's cool. So it's called Live in Exile. Yeah. Okay. It's cool. Awesome. All right. Well, um. Who's your greatest musical influence? Last question. Um, or top five if you need to. I love I love Jeff Tweedy and Wilco. Mm -hmm. I think that dude is probably the best songwriter I've ever like seen. Um, I think he's just the machine. I love that's I'm all over the place. Like like I love Beck as much as I love, you know, like I love pop music. <laughs> no, I really do. I, yeah. I, and I, I hope that like comes through. Like you said, like upside down sounds like nothing else. Like totally comes through. Yeah. I mean, when I first heard you, I thought, oh my god, this guy is the new Bob Dylan, and I, and I am a big <laughs> Dylan fan. So I'm like, me too. Oh yeah. God, yes. And then the next song is like, um, I don't just totally different, and I love that because you know it makes you just a super dynamic artist that like oh, that's sweet. Thanks. many people can listen to. But yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it's scary when you're really like with Upside Down. I was like, either people are going to love this or it's just going to ruin my career. Because it's like, <laughs> I don't, you never know. You don't know if people are going to be like, that is just not, you know. So it's nice to get a reaction from that when it's like, you know, some people only know me from Shine. And it's mm -hmm. like, man, this is really not Shine. You know, this is completely different. Um, but again, like that's why I love music. I love hip hop. I love pop music. I love heavy metal. You know, so I'm gonna try to. If I had a whole record and it all sounded like "Come On," I would probably be kind of bummed about that. You know, yeah. personally. You know. No, totally. It make. I mean, it makes your record one that you could just like play through and mm -hmm. not have to, you know, keep changing and stuff. It. You know. So. Yeah. That you're. That's awesome. Do that. 
So anyways, um, that's pretty much all I have. Um, it was really awesome talking to you. You too, Jen. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much.